guess what? I am so excited because I have another collab video here for you today. And this one I think is going to be a lot of fun. Me, Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance and Michelle from The Simple Quilter got together and decided to challenge each other. If you remember back to my thrifty fabric video, I talked about a website that I really love called a thriftynotion.com. And on that website, they have these boxes that they put together that are called challenge boxes. So they have a wide variety of different things in each of the box and you are challenged to make something from the random assortment of items inside. Now you do get to kind of see what is in the box. There are photos of it, they're all different. So my box is different from Chris's and from Michelle's. So we all kind of have a different challenge in front of us. So I'm gonna open up my box, show you everything that's in it and kind of talk about what my plan is and what I'm going to be making. Now, I will put a link to their channels in the description below, and in the first comment, I'm gonna pin a link to their videos so that you can check out what they make from their challenge box when it goes up. So, let's see what I'm challenged with. All right, so I'm gonna pop this open and we're gonna see what I am challenged with. So first on top here, I have some paperwork with my invoice and then also the challenge box rules. So you buy your challenge box, you make something at least using at least 50% of the items in the box. Then you can post what you make on Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok. You got to tag them when you use those um, hashtags and all of that and send them an email letting them know that you completed everything. You can get a $25 gift card. Uh, I think that's a lot of fun. It's definitely going to take advantage of that. All right, so here is what is in my box. So definitely a challenge, right? I'm gonna go through all the items and you should let me know in the comments before I let you know what I'm gonna make, what you think you would make with the items in the box. All right, so when I saw this box, I definitely thought it had a vintage feel to it. It has lace, some wooden buttons, some wooden handles. I think they're purse handles. I'm actually not sure what they are for, so you should let me know in the comments what you think. But I'm gonna go through everything in here. So there's these wooden handles, and on the other side, there's kind of a groove carved out of them. I wasn't really sure what they would be for, so I am thinking... What I originally thought was that maybe they were purse handles. I don't know, you'll have to let me know if you know what they are. So there's some thread here, just some cream thread. It's all purpose coats thread. There are a little bit of stains on them and I think it's probably from leaning on the buttons. I'm honestly probably not going to use the thread because I am going to sew this using my sewing machine and my sewing machine is pretty particular about the thread that it likes, so. I might keep this on hand just to use for hand sewing when I need to do that. There's some different laces here and I absolutely love lace, so I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna separate them so you can see the lace a little bit better. And I will also move the box so I can lay it out better, but I'll show that in a second. I'm gonna show the buttons. They both feel like they are wooden buttons. I'm really excited because I think they are really cute. And then here is the fabric that is in the box. And this just looks like it's filler paper. Um, I might look and see if the pattern's actually something useful on it, but I think it's just mainly used for filling the box. So here is the fabric. It's definitely really heavy and it has a liner around it. I wondered if it was going to be used like for a, um, like a curtain or something like that. but you can see one thing I'm worried about is that it might unravel when I go to cut it. I'm kind of curious because I'm not familiar with the fabric at all. It's definitely textured. I would figure a little itchy, but my original thought I'll tell you is that I wanted to kind of make a carpet bag similar to the Mary Poppins bag, but I couldn't find a good pattern for what my idea was. So I'm gonna have to shift it a little bit. But here is the 
lace. So there's a pretty nice sized piece of this lace. And then there is this piece that is, I think it's the same lace, but just cut into two different pieces. But it looks like the same pattern. And one side's kind of unraveling a little bit on. So whatever I do with that, I'm gonna have to keep that in mind to make sure it's tucked in to something so that it doesn't keep unraveling and sewn down really well. Now I'm gonna move into telling you what my idea is for this fabric. I think I'm still going to do a bag. And I took some time to look around after I kind of saw what was in the box and searched through for some bag patterns. I still wanted to go with that idea because I didn't feel like this pat this fabric would suit a quilt, which is where my comfort really is with sewing. I do love to sew handbags as well, but I couldn't quite figure out a bag for this fabric that spoke to me right away. I was like, I don't really want to go with just a traditional tote bag because I wasn't sure how to work the handles into it. So I searched around on Etsy for a while and I think I found the perfect pattern. So you'll have to let me know what you think. So I'm gonna cover up the measurements and everything, but I wanted you to see a photo of the bag. I'm thinking that this will work. It is called the wood handle bag and I found it on Etsy. So, I will put a link to it in the description below because I think it will work well with all different types of fabric and will be a pretty quick sew. Now inside of the bag there is a liner and on that liner there are instructions for putting a slip pocket inside. So what my plan is there is to use the lace to kind of line the pockets and I'm hoping to also put some lace around here to use some of, some of that from the box as well. So with this plan, I think I will be able to not only use a good portion of the fabric in the box, because I plan to use the fabric for the outside of the bag, the exterior of the bag, and then pull some lining fabric from my stash, but also use some of the exterior fabric for the pockets on the bag. So I'm gonna cut all that up and then see what I have left of the exterior fabric. I'm hoping that uses up a good portion of it. And like I said, I think I'll be all able to also use some of the lace on the exterior and on the interior of the bag to use that. So I'll just have the buttons in that thread still left to use, but I will be using a good portion of the fabric, the lace, and the wooden, what I'm calling handles. So hopefully I can find a good idea within this for using some of the buttons because I think they are quite cute, but I think I'll be using enough of the products in the bag to not have to use them on this project. They'll definitely get used somewhere because they're really cute. So I'm gonna get everything cut for the bag the pockets, the lining, and the exterior of the bag, and then I'll start working through the pattern. Again, I will link to the pattern in the description below because I think it's gonna be a cute little handbag. All right, so after cutting all of my pieces, I'm going to work on some of the prep work for this bag, and one of those is adding the fusible interfacing onto the back of my main fabric. So I cut it to size and I left the appropriate measurements on the top and the, well, the tops of the bag. <laughs> and I'm just going to press this in place. I had to kind of guess on the temperature that I would use and everything because I'm not sure what this fabric is. Um, but hopefully I can get this attached. If not, I might just spray baste it in space in place or something like that. But I'm gonna work through this and then I'll let you know if it went ahead and fused on its own or if I had to uh, get it in place using another method. All right, so just using some heat from the iron, uh, attached it on really well, so I think I'm good. I'm gonna let it cool when I use a fusible to the fabric. I like to let it cool completely before I move it. That way I don't get any weird, um, 
waves in it or anything like that. It lets the glue adhere. So I'm gonna let this cool down and work on the pockets for the bag. All right, so I'm going to work on the pockets now. And like I said before, I wanna add this lace trim to the top of my slip pockets. So I'm gonna cut some lace the width of my pockets. And you can see I'm cutting over a little bit because I'm going to trim it to size once I stitch it in place. So I'm going to sort of just eyeball this. If you want to measure it out, you could, but I'm going to leave a about a half of an inch, at least want to be a little wider than a quarter of an inch at the top of this pocket. And I'm going to just stitch it in place about an eighth of an inch away from the top and bottom of the lace. And like I said, I'm just eyeballing it. If you need it to be perfect, you can always measure it out, pin it in place. I'm okay since it's inside of the purse if it's just close enough because nobody's going to get that close to looking at it. So this will get it done a little bit faster. All right, so I'm just going to stitch across here. I'm going to stitch along the edge too, but when I bring the pocket together, that's going to get held in place anyway. All right, I'm going to do the same thing with the other lace on the other pocket. All right, so now that my lace is in place, what we are going to do is attach the lining right sides together to the exterior fabric pocket. So I'm gonna lay these out right sides together. I'm going to leave about two inches at the top of this pocket where the lace is open so I can flip this right side out after I sew around. I'm gonna sew about a quarter of an inch around and I'm going to back stitch really well at the start and end so that when I'm turning this pocket right side out, uh, I don't open up those stitches any. So I'm gonna sew all the way around this and leave a little bit of an opening, flip it around and press it really well. And then I'm going to sew two rows of top stitching at the top of both of these pockets. That will close up the opening and give a nice finished look to this pocket. All right, so my slip pockets are done and they look amazing with the lace. I'm so glad I decided to do that. So now I have my bag lining here and I have it pressed in half twice. So you can kind of see the creases there. And then I marked my marks up from the center crease. That's where the bottom of my pockets are going to go. And the top of the pocket wants to face the top of the lining. So I'm gonna line these up. I'm gonna find the middle of my pocket line it up with that crease I made, and then pin it in place so I can stitch around it. Now I'm gonna grab a ruler and measure to make sure this is straight and even it out if I need to. But I'm going to stitch around. I'm gonna leave the top of the pocket open. I'm gonna stitch along the side, stitch along the bottom, come up to create a divide so that these pockets have two slips pockets. I'm gonna come back down, sew along the breast of the bottom and up the side. First, I'm gonna to check to make sure these are nice and straight. All right, so I am getting so excited about how this bag is going to turn out. I have my pockets sewn in place for the lining of the bag and I really think it's going to look so good. I am loving the lace on here and I might start adding some lace onto some more of my slip pockets. I really like how it looks. So I have the pocket on this side and then the pocket on the other side sewn in place. So I just need to bring the bag together at this point. So I'm gonna take the exterior fabric and the lining fabric and place them right sides together. And I'm going to sew a, a seam along the top and bottom of the bag. So 
actually. It's the top and top of the bag. I keep saying top and bottom, but if you're following the pattern, it is amazing instructions and you will be fine. So now that I have these seams sewn on the short side, combining the lining and the exterior, I'm gonna bring those seams together in the middle. So I'm gonna line everything up so my exterior of the bag is going to be right sides together with the fold down on one side and then my lining fabric is going to be lined up right sides together as well on the other side. So when I get the lining lined up and I have my seam lined up, I'm gonna press the seams open on both sides and put some pins at the ends to hold it all in place. So it's pressed open, so then I can line that seam up really nicely and add a pin to hold it. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. And my next step is to use the template and the pattern to box the corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. Okay, I just realized something. So I got my corners boxed like I needed to, but I almost missed something. I wanted to add that lace onto the seam up here. And if I go any further, I won't be able to do it as I want. So I am going to quickly do that and I'll show you what it looks like so that you can get an idea of how I worked that into place. All right, so I'm just gonna open up the fabric here, measure out the lace length that I need and I'm just going to stitch it across here along both sides and that way the ends will just get tuck, tucked into the seams. So I'm going to do that along each side of the bag. So right here at the edge where the seam is meeting with the lining, that's where I'm going to add my lace. This time I'm going to pin it in place since this is the exterior of the bag. All right, so I added the lace to each side. So now we're gonna start back to where we were and bring the seams back together and add pins there. So now we're gonna sew along the sides of the bag with them right sides together. And we're going to mark down from the seam. So I'm gonna mark right here. And right here so all right so i place my mark per the pattern from the seam down along each side and so now what i'm going to do is match up the sides and sew up to that marked seam along each side all right so now that i have those seams sewn i'm going to Press these seams here, and then I'm going to sew the boxed corners. So I'm gonna bring those together and sew them. All right, so now I turned the bag right side out and you can kind of see how it is coming together, the inside and everything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna be tucking these seams in that are open. I'm gonna carefully tuck them in and pin them and I'm going to stitch around here to just kind of keep that all in place. So I'm going to work on that and, and stitching around it and then we'll be able to finish up the bag. All right, so here is my finished bag and I'm going to bring you in a little closer so you can take a look. All right, so you can see here that the lace ended up on the inside of the bag. I should have lowered it a little bit on the lining, but first time constructing a pattern, sometimes things like that can happen, but it still is a cute little accent. Then when you open the bag up, you have access to the entire bag as well as the slip pockets. Everything is cinched together here on the handles. My handles were a little bit small for how bulky the fabric is, but if you purchase the size wooden handles for the suggested pattern, you will have a lot easier of a time attaching it. I was able to, even with 
smaller handles that were a lot thicker. So if you got the proper wooden handles, it'd be a lot easier for you. So there's the bag. I think it turned out pretty good for just using the fabric given. And yeah, it was a lot of fun just thinking outside of the box and just making it work with what was provided in the box. So let me know what you think of how it turned out. It definitely was a challenge, but I think it's a pretty cute little bag. All right. So make sure you go and watch Michelle and Chris's challenge videos and give their channel a subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to like their videos and leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.